Yeah, let's discuss two miscellaneous requirements of accounting standard 21. The first is with respect to uniform accounting policies. Accounting standard 21 is of the view that the ideal situation is that the parent and the subsidiary are all following the same accounting policies. So let us say you are acquiring control over some company and that company becomes your subsidiary. We should ensure that that subsidiary now starts following the same accounting policies as followed by the parent. So that's an ideal situation that every company in the group is following the same accounting policy. What if by chance this ideal situation is not possible, then what to do? Let us say you are acquiring shares of some subsidiary, but that subsidiary is following, let's say, weighted average method for inventory valuation. As a parent, you are following the FIFO method for valuation. We ask the subsidiary that please change your accounting policy, but the subsidiary is not changing the accounting policy. The subsidiary argues that see all the other companies in the same industry are following the same accounting policy. So I will like to continue with that accounting policy. Makes sense. So in such a situation, we will allow the subsidiary to follow whatever accounting policy it is following. So at the time of consolidation, what will happen is there are certain subsidiaries which are following a different accounting policy. So if a subsidiary is not following the same accounting policy as followed by the parent, we will redraft the financial statement of the subsidiary and confirm it with the accounting policies of the parent. What it means is we will do outside the book adjustment. The main balance sheet of the subsidiary, the main p &L of the subsidiary which you are presenting to your shareholders, that will not be altered. That will remain as per the independent accounting policy of the subsidiary. But for the purpose of consolidation, we will redraft. Redraft means we will do it outside the books. We will simply argue that if the subsidiary had followed the same accounting policy as that of the parent, then how will its financial statements look like? And those financial statements will be consolidated with that of the parent. However, what if such redrafting is also not practicable? Let's say we are not able to do that. The accounting standard 21 says, fine, doesn't matter. Go ahead and carry out consolidation. Please provide disclosures for those different items for which you are following the different accounting policies. Very quickly, once again, ideally, parent and subsidiary should follow same, same set of accounting policies. Let us say it is not happening. Then redraft the financial statements of the subsidiary by confirming it with the accounting policies of the parent only, only for the purpose of consolidation. Fine. This is also not possible, then please carry out consolidation, right? But provide the necessary disclosures. Readers of consolidated financial statements should know that what are the different items for which the parent and subsidiary are following different accounting policies. Another issue, uniform reporting dates, right? Financial statements of the parent and the subsidiary should be all drawn up to the same date. For example, if the year is ending on 31st March 20 for the parent, the year should end on 31st March 20 also for all the subsidiaries. So that is the ideal situation that parent and subsidiary are all following the same accounting year. What if it is not so? For example, your subsidiary is outside India. You have a foreign subsidiary. The laws of that particular country require that you have to follow the calendar year as your accounting year. While in India, it is required that you should follow the financial year as your accounting year. So I will be preparing my financial statements on 31st March 20. My subsidiary is forced to prepare it on 31st December 19. Right. So it is not possible for the subsidiary to follow the same accounting year. No problem. For the purpose of consolidation, redraft or restate the financial statements of the subsidiary and align it with the reporting date of the parent. So subsidiary has already prepared up to 31st December. Fine. We will redraft the financial statements. We will argue that if the subsidiary is also preparing its financial statements up to 31st March 20, then how will those financial statements look like? So outside the book, we will do adjustments and carry out consolidation.
what if this is also not practicable? Let's say it is not possible for the subsidiary to redraft its financial statements. Fine, no problem. Carry out the consolidation. Balance sheet of the parent is on 31st March 20. Balance sheet of the subsidiary is on 31st December 19. No problem. Go ahead and carry out consolidation, even if the reporting dates are different. All that accounting standard 21 requires is that the difference in the reporting date should not be more than six months, right? It should not be more than six months. If it is not more than six months, you can go ahead and carry out the consolidation. 